Sometimes you find that the NFL eventually mirrors the college game based off of the type of systems and schemes that the college game runs. Eventually, because of the talent that is produced out of those schemes, it makes sense at the NFL level to start incorporating those schemes. You think of the Wildcat formation. Um, you think of all the spread option, read option that you see now in the NFL. It's very prevalent in large part because it is so prevalent in the college football game. On the flip side, you think of sometimes as the NFL starts to change itself that you would expect the college game to change in like. You know, whereas the NFL has went a little more to running back by committee, you see a lot of college teams kind of go running back by committee, you know, just as an example. But one interesting trend to me is that in recent years, as the tight end position has reached a critical level of importance to NFL teams, at least a much larger and more significant importance than that position has ever had in NFL offenses, I find it ironic that we look to the college game to produce these talented tight ends that could come in and rip up the NFL, and most years it just doesn't happen. You, know, you look at last year's draft class was nothing great at the tight end position, and it's the same way again this year. I'm kind of surprised. You would think at some point in time with the NFL shifting to a certain philosophy or approach that the college game would a little bit more too, and the talent just isn't there. The talent just isn't being produced. Now, look, that's not to say that there isn't going to be a couple of starters that come out of this draft of the tight end position. That's very possible, if not likely, and a couple of other productive maybe role players. But true impact players, it's hard for me to see any true impact players or future stars out of this draft of the tight end position, hence why I won't spend a ton of time on this video. Now, sure, as you look at the tight end prospect rankings in this draft for me, the first thing you'll notice probably, a lot of you, is that I don't have Hunter Henry as my number one tight end. You know, I look at Hunter Henry, I don't think he worked out that well in the offseason process. Going back and watching his game film, he seemed a little bit slow of foot. I have some concerns about his ability to separate from linebackers at the NFL level, let alone safeties or maybe even slot corners. You know, needs some work on his run blocking. He's not terrible there, but he could obviously be better. I just have a couple of other tight ends that I like better. I think the best uh, athlete in terms of the highly rated tight ends to me has to be Jarrell Adams from South Carolina. If he was in a better offense, on a better team, with a better quarterback that got him more opportunities, he probably thought of more highly as a prospect, similar to his teammate there, Farrell Cooper, the wide receiver. It's hard because you're trying to judge him off of a limited window. But, you know, sometimes you got glimpses in terms of what Jarrell Adams could do when he was given the football in an athletic position. So I really like him. And for me, in this weak-ass booty tight end class, he is the number one guy. I like Austin Hooper from Stanford a little bit more than Hunter Henry as well. Um, he is a more well-rounded all-around tight end at this point in time, in my opinion. And I guess it's not a huge difference between the two of them to me, but I do like Hooper a little bit more. Now, there are a couple of guys a little bit later on in the draft that I do happen to like quite a bit. You look at four through six on my rankings. Nick Vanett from Ohio State, Thomas Duarte from UCLA, Devin Kajuste from Stanford. You look at Kajuste, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. If I'm not, I don't fucking care. Um, but you look at him, he's about 6'3", 6'4", 245, something like that. So, 235, excuse me. So he's probably a little big and a little slow to play wide receiver full-time at the NFL level. But you could utilize him in an H-back type of role. Coming from that Stanford system, you know he understands an, a basic NFL offense that he could be effective as a blocker. He's somebody that you could deploy in the passing game. I like him quite a bit. I really like Thomas Duarte from UCLA. Similar type of mold to Kajusti, but I think a better overall athlete. And, you know, while maybe a little more attention is dedicated in that UCLA Bruins offense of 2015 to obviously the Rosen one, and then to a lesser degree somebody like a Jordan Payton and a Paul Perkins, I think Duarte gets lost in the shuffle. And I really like this kid. And, there's a chance that he could be a really effective number two tight end where you have a quality starter already. He could come in and be a really good role player there and make teams on the opposing side really struggle with how to game plan this team that has two tight ends and it can cause some damage. To me, the most complete and well-rounded tight end in this class, he doesn't have the spectacular film, he doesn't make the spectacular plays, is Nick Vanett from Ohio State. This is a good, solid football player. And when you're looking at guys that you want to take 
late day two, early day three, um, that could come in and fill a role, do a lot of the fundamental things, just be solid, a steady hand, somebody you can rely upon, somebody you can trust. I think the kid from Ohio State fits the bill probably better technically than any tight end in this entire 2016 NFL draft class. In fact, I think some people sleep on him, and maybe, arguably, I'm sleeping on him a little bit. You know, I've heard some Heath Miller type of comparisons, and I think those are appropriate. You know, and Heath Miller had a decade-long career plus at the NFL level and played at a solid level. And Nick Vanek could possibly do the same type of thing. Uh, another tight end that would have been a lot higher on these rankings for me if it wasn't for a recent off the field arrest was Tyler Higby from Western Kentucky. At one point in time, he was trending as either the number one or number two tight end of this class to me, depending on the day and which way the blue, breeze blew. When, when you get into the draft process, though, and you get arrested then, that just speaks to a lack of judgment, a lack of football character, a lack of common sense and intelligence, frankly. You get arrested like that in the before draft process. When you know this is basically a job interview process, you're trying to get yourself as much money as you can, the best position you possibly can, and you go do something stupid like this. This is like out there in the real world when somebody sits there and knows that they drug test, knows they're going to have to take a drug test, knows that they've got a little bit of time to clean out their system. They either don't get their fucking niacin to go clean out their goddamn system or even better, don't lay off the goddamn blunt or off the bong or off the joint or off the bowl or whatever. And then they go and drop and of course they drop hot. They flunk the fucking piss test. Because they're stupid. Period. And if you get arrested in the pre-draft process like this, knowing it is one big, massive, months-long interview process, Tyler Higby, Dak Prescott in particular, especially when you talk about the severity of the offense, Chris Jones getting arrested for a license thing, that's one thing. But when you're talking about assaulting people and DUI, you, know, you got to be pretty stupid. And are these the type of people that you want to pay a lot of money to? Can you really trust them to be good presence on the field, in the locker room, and in the community as well? So I've dropped Higby all the way down to a six-round pick. Lucky is even, I've even got him on my damn board because that is a special level of stupid right there, if we're being so honest. So uh, that's about all I want to say about this tight end class. It doesn't deserve much more time than this, frankly. It's lucky it got what it did.